Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Channel Yas. Uh, thank you so much for uh, participating. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Today's guest is very special uh, from Belgium. So today's guest is CEO of Zetis, Pierre. Pierre. Thank, thank you, you so much. Time. Thanks so, for inviting me. Thanks oh, thank you for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, joining us. Um, it's a very uh, much honor uh, to, uh, to have you uh, on this uh, most popular live show in Panasonic, <laughs> Channel Yas. <laughs> so what made you uh, come to uh, Japan this time? Um, the, the, this, this time we, we were coming for a lot of reasons to mm. Japan because yep. we like to discuss with you and yep. with uh, the, the board members about uh, our budget, about uh, yeah. what, uh, what is the strategic plan for the company in the future. Yeah, next uh, fiscal year's uh, business planning uh, process is going on right now. Mm. Okay, uh, so how often do you come to, to, to Japan? Uh, usually one or two times a well, year, no more two times. but then uh, for a week, so we have time to meet a lot of people and that's also in, uh, always interesting to meet people because uh, when you are face to face, you can share much more ideas than when you do that in teams. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, I like yeah. to come uh, to, to. Yeah, to especially Japan. after COVID 19. I mean, face to face interaction is, is, is very important, I yeah, yeah. noticed. And yesterday you went to Osaka? Yes, indeed, okay. indeed. I had the opportunity to meet uh, the CEO of Panasonic uh, Holding. That was the first time for me. Um, first time? Yes, oh, yes. To meet Kusumi san. Yes, and ah. to, present, to present our business. Was he nice to you? Uh, yes, we had some uh, <laughs> hard questions. Hard but, uh, questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it was a pleasure to meet again uh, Umeda-san, uh, Shotoku-san and uh, Shotoku Sumida-san that I already knew. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, all, 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 uh, all of the uh, important uh, uh, people you met. So, uh, I guess the people not uh, uh, yet uh, familiar with the uh, ZITES. Uh, so, uh, can you tell us about the ZITES a little bit? Yes, sure, sure. Um, you know, ZTS is part of Panasonic now for seven years, huh? mm -hmm. so already a long, long period of time. Period of time. But I can imagine that uh, we are still a small company compared with uh, the big business of but Panasonic. But it's a very important company. Thank you. Um, we have two different business lines, what we call business lines, because mm -hmm. finally um, we serve two types of customers. Mm -hmm. The first one is what we call the good side business. Mm -hmm. And that's about uh, execution of tasks on the supply chain. We help our customers mm -hmm. to execute tasks in a warehouse or to execute tasks in the point of sale, mm -hmm. in, the, in the shop or on the street. Mm -hmm. okay? That's one, one business. The other business is uh, what we call people ID, uh, people mm -hmm. identification. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a business where we serve governments mm -hmm. and we offer them turnkey solutions to provide to the citizens uh, travel documents or ID documents mm -hmm. uh, because it's a very specific niche uh, market mm -hmm. uh, and you need to have very high skills mm -hmm. and governments usually don't have those skills mm -hmm. and then they, they outsource, they give the mission to a company like Zites to provide those travel documents or ID documents for years to their citizens. So in that case you need to have uh, very high level of trust from the customers, meaning governments, right? And you are doing a very important project of passport and anything with the uh, Belgium government, right? Yes, that's true, that's true. And uh, the trust, you know, it takes years to right. build the trust and you can never lose the trust. So we are very cautious about uh, our reputation. And our reputation is uh, based on the quality of the service that we will deliver. Mm -hmm. or ability to provide the right documents to the, to, to the citizens in the right time mm -hmm. and then to keep the data because it's very sensitive data that we keep for the yeah. accounts of the government about the citizens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, uh, really there that we put the focus uh, on our teams and we have extremely good people to do that, uh, mm -hmm. ex experienced people. Mm -hmm. And we are quite proud because uh, in Europe we have uh, uh, some governments uh, giving us uh, their trust. Yeah, um, Panasonic has been uh, acquiring uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, companies uh, and among those M&As, I think 
uh, GTS partnership is the most successful partnership in the history of Panasonic, I believe. Because you sell Panasonic products in, in your area and we sell GTS product to in Japan. So that's something we haven't seen in the past. So really, really successful partnership. I really appreciate uh, your uh, collaboration mindset and uh, our team's efforts. So thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate very much as well. Uh, because uh, since seven years that we are uh, together with, uh, with Panasonic, we see every time the power of Panasonic. Huh? Mm -hmm. And not only the power, but also yeah. the, the long-term view. Mm -hmm. That's what we really appreciate with yeah, Panasonic. Yeah. Huh? So culturally, uh, we are uh, very close and similar. Yes, yeah, yes. I'm glad, mm -hmm. I'm glad about it. Um, talking about Belgium, uh, ZTS is headquartered in Belgium, and you are also from uh, mm -hmm. uh, Belgium. Uh, the only thing I know about Belgium is uh, chocolate. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> what a, else do you have? It's a good starting point. Good. Huh? The chocolates are very good. So, uh. Chocolate is fantastic. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm from Belgium myself. Mm. Um, um, I was born in the east of Belgium, uh, mm. a place called Spa. Maybe mm. some, some of uh, the Panasonic Connect empl employees know mm. uh, Formula One. And there is yeah, a Formula famous one. circuit, uh, the Grand Prix of Belgium is always in Spa. And I was born there uh, in the east of Belgium. Oh, okay. nice. Sounds like a very nice city. Yes, uh, yes. It's a small town, but uh, interesting because mm. there are a lot of activities there and, and so on. Close and to the border? Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, it's very close to the border of Germany, Germany. and the border of Luxembourg. Oh, mm. okay. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's, uh, and uh, what language do people speak? In Belgium. Yes. in Belgium, it's a very, very <laughs> complicated situation. <laughs> we have uh, three different languages, three, officially. Three languages. Yeah, yeah. Some people are speaking Dutch. Mm -hmm. Some people are speaking French. Yep. And some people, a small community, mm -hmm. is speaking German. German. Yeah? And then it's, uh, it's a quite complex country because uh, oh. uh, it's always finding a good way mm -hmm. to to live together, mm. uh, to share values, <laughs> to share projects for the future. And uh, it's every time with two different or three different cultures. Mm. And therefore, uh, Belgium is known and all Belgian people are known because they are already always uh, looking for consensus. Consensus, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, okay. And it works, mm. it works for f 150 <laughs> years and I hope that it will continue like that. Uh, but some people speak only one language, right? No, usually so people are speaking two or three languages in Belgium. Wow. Yes, yes. Oh. And the reason is that when you are French speaking like mm. me, yep. you need to speak Dutch as well. Right. Mm. And then on top of French and Dutch, mm -hmm. usually people are speaking English. Mm. And why? Because Brussels is in the middle of Belgium. Yep. It's the, the capital. Cap yeah, exactly. The capital yeah. of Belgium. Mm. But it's also the capital of Europe. You know that in Europe, all the European countries uh, yeah. have made a club of 27 countries mm. collaborating on a lot of topics. Yeah. Huh? European uh, Union? European yes, com community? Yes, exactly. European yeah. Union. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. And mm. we have uh, in Brussels the European Commission. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of government for mm. uh, the actions of European Union. Yeah, what they call EC. Yes, yes, yes. Unity. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And also, uh, you have uh, the headquarters uh, for NATO. Yes, uh, exactly. In uh, exactly. Belgium. Yeah. So we wow. have people living in people uh, in Brussels are from every country mm -hmm. in Europe and in the rest of the world. Huh? Oh. Because NATO, for example, mm -hmm. it's the uh, United States together with Europe. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of people speaking different languages. Mm -hmm. And usually in Brussels, a lot of people are speaking English oh. because it's easier. Since you are very good at making consensus, I mean, if you locate your headquarters in Belgium, I mean, everything is okay. Is yes, <laughs> and on top of that, it's a very small country. Belgium is a small oh. country. Mm. And, um, you know, uh, when you try to build a group like ZTS Group, because we have grown by making acquisitions to mm. have a good network everywhere in every European country, mm. when a German company is trying to do that, mm -hmm. Other countries are a bit afraid oh because yeah. Germany is a big country, right, dominant. Right. When it's France, big country, dominant. Right, right. UK, big UK. country, <laughs> dominant. When it's Belgium, nobody takes care. But at the end, we, we, we are reaching a good consensus. Ah, okay. Uh, I see, I see. So how much uh, population uh, do, you, do you have in Belgium? 
you know? About 11 million. So 11 million. Japan, it's uh, 100, uh, 110 million as well. Yeah, uh, uh, I know. It's uh, one-tenth. And it's also popula population density is high, right? Like Holland. Yes, that's oh. true. That's true because the, the country is small. Mm -hmm. But it's really in the, in, in the heart of, uh, of Europe. Mm. Uh, and so it was attracting a lot of people in the past. And uh, yeah, we have, uh, uh, but we have good people as mm. well. I understand you uh, took uh, Shinkansen uh, bullet train yesterday to go to uh, Osaka. So compared to uh, Eurostar, uh, you have uh, to go to London and Paris. How different was it? <laughs> the, the big difference yeah. is that the Shinkansen is yeah. always on time. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. And uh, <laughs> the high speed trains in, the, in Europe, uh, sometimes it's uh, 15 Delayed. minutes delay, uh, uh, cancelled, uh, whatever. But okay, uh -huh. it's uh, still uh, the good solution for uh, the future. Okay. Because, uh, so maybe operational issue. Yes, yeah. operational is issues, but it's, uh, it's uh, anyway a good solution for transportation in Europe because finally the cities are not so far from each other. Huh? Mm. And from Brussels you can go in mm -hmm. 1 hour 20 to mm -hmm. Paris, you mm -hmm. can go in 2 hours to London, mm -hmm. you can go in 1 hour to uh, Amsterdam, mm -hmm. so it's quite, quite co convenient. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, so working oh, well. oh, That's oh, the future, huh? the train is the future for the, yep. for the transportation. Great. And uh, as you said, you, s you, you were born in a small city of uh, Spa, and, uh, and then after that, uh, uh, what did you learn uh, uh, in, in your college days? Yeah, I, I moved to close to Brussels to uh, study, mm -hmm. to go to the university, mm -hmm. and I was uh, doing economic science. I have a master economic in science. economic science. Oh. Uh, and I started my career as a banker. Uh, for more than 10 years, mm. I was working in the banking sector. Oh, okay, mm. okay. Mm. So more on the side of finance. Mm -hmm. I understand you started, uh, uh, in started to uh, work for Zetas in the year 2000? Yes. 2000. Before that, uh, who did you work for? I, uh, I, which companies you mean? Yeah. Yes, yes. Banking I was industry? working for um, a company uh, called uh, uh, Krelan. And that mm -hmm. was uh, a bank mm -hmm. giving credit to agriculture. Oh, okay. okay. Focusing on ag agriculture. Yeah, oh, yes. Okay. But I was not really involved in uh, the relation with the customers. I was much more on the financing of the bank and on oh, the, the, the balance between in the balance sheet between assets and liabilities. It's mm -hmm. a bit technical. Was it government owned a bank or it's a it's no? A it was uh, private. It was private, private already. Private. Yes, yes, yes. And then after that, you joined. Uh, uh, and then yeah. suddenly yeah. I have decided to join ZITES because I met the, the founder of ZITES, Alain oh. Wirtz, at the mm. time. Completely different world. Yes, yes, completely, completely. Mm. It was unexpected for me. Uh, mm. But I, I met him and he told me that's uh, my project with, uh, with ZITES. And I was uh, thinking, yeah, that's an interesting business. Uh, mm. Company has a lot of ambition. Uh, company wants to be international. Mm. Uh, that's, that could be interesting. Mm -hmm. But I said uh, to the founder, but I am not the right guy because I have never worked in an industrial or service company, so mm -hmm. I'm not the right guy. And he told me, yes, yes, join me. So finally <laughs> I joined him. And, uh, I guess at that time J Zetas was still a small startup. Yes, Is exactly. That right? exactly. Uh, 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 with a lot of debt. So uh, it was a <laughs> big issue in the first years to manage that, uh, that uh, difficult situation. So did you but join Zetas as CFO? Yes, yes, uh, I tried to, to really to structure the company and make make sure that the I company was sustainable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes uh, startups are not structured well. But, exactly, uh, exactly. Okay, so you did that, uh, you did the CFO for uh, what? Uh, seven, uh, 19 years? Uh, 20, 20, years 20 years. 20 years. 20 yes, years. Yes, exactly. And then you became a CEO of uh, uh, Zidis. Uh, CFO job and CEO job. How different? <laughs> it's different, it's different. But you know, um, with the time, um, when you start in a new job, and certainly uh, in ZTS, because the company was not st structured, yep. I took yep. time mm -hmm. to build very good teams. Yep. Huh? Yep. To really do, uh, preparing the reporting, uh, doing the uh, analysis of figures and so on. And the more the team is performing, mm -hmm. the more the CFO can take care of the business strategy, mm -hmm. looking for the future and, and so on. And mm -hmm. that's what, what happened to mm -hmm. me in the years where we were 
uh, on the stock exchange because in 2005 mm. we went on the stock exchange with Zetas. Yeah, IPO. Mm. Yeah, until the time uh, that Panasonic uh, decided to acquire uh, mm. Zetas in a friendly operation. Mm. Um, and during that period, I had the opportunity to, to focus much more on the strategy and on mm -hmm. the development of the company mm -hmm. than on the figures. I see. Yeah. I guess most of the uh, CFOs are, are just counting uh, bean, beans <laughs> and uh, not, not want to be involved in strategy and even corporate culture and things like that. But you were, uh, as a CFO, you were involved uh, in the uh, strategies and other component, uh, uh, other important components uh, around management. Yeah, that's oh. true. That's true, and it's the reason why when, when uh, it was about the, the succession and when uh, you asked me to to, to become the CEO, um, I had some clear ideas about uh, what uh, could be the future so of this. So that's why the uh, transition was so smooth. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> you <laughs> tell me that. It was smooth. I hope <laughs> so. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, immediately, you jumped in and correct. Uh, uh, the many things. So yeah. Any, anyway, I enjoyed that uh, that new job uh, for the last two years, mm. and um, and I believe that we have still a lot of ambition, and I'm uh, mm. uh, very grateful to to you, uh, Iguchi san that you support us uh, for for continuously develop the, the company and uh, strategically invest. Yeah, if it's so, I'm uh, I'm very gr grateful. Uh, uh, but uh, as a CEO, uh, uh, in terms of priorities you have. What are the high, high, high priority things right, n r right now? Okay. Mm. Uh, I need to say that there are more than one. Eh? <laughs> more than one. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. First of all, um, we, we are a company, a service company using technologies. And yeah. it's important that we continuously invest in new technologies. Right. So, uh, the feeling that my mic is not uh, going well, yeah? Like that, it's okay. I hope so. Um, so we need strategically to think about wha where do we need to be in five years, yep. ten years, huh? yep. to make sure that we stay on the on the edge of the, the technology, right. and that we can still provide good solutions and good services that to our customers. That is very important for future. any okay? technology company. Yeah, exactly. Then the second priority is the people. Mm. Uh, our employees are very important. Why? Mm. Because it's the main asset that we have in our company. Mm. Uh, it's the quality of the people, the brain of the people to give the right service to our customers. Otherwise, you cannot get trust. Yes, exactly. Yep. exactly. And trust is extremely important, mm -hmm. as we have said with uh, governance, for example. Yep. Yeah? So that's, that's really the second uh, priority. And then I, uh, we like to build a more and more sustainable company mm -hmm. in terms of um, in terms of future uh, for the company, mm -hmm. but in terms as well of integration in the society and the role of our company in the society. Mm. Because you cannot develop a business for the business itself. Mm -hmm. At the end, it needs to serve the society. Yeah. Right? And so those three objectives are there. Mm -hmm. And one of them, if you want to be sustainable, you need to manage your reputation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Reputation is extremely important in our, in mm. our business, mm. in every business, but when you speak with governments about the, the ID documents and, and so on, it's very important that we have a good reputation. The first one, technology, uh, are there any uh, uh, specific areas uh, you want to focus? Uh, I mean, cloud services and software and other uh, hardware layers and others, uh, what, what are the, you are technologically uh, uh, prioritized? Yes, yes. You know, for example, in, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, ID documents, mm -hmm. in the past, an ID document, it was a protected piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. After that, it became electronic. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have put a chip, protected mm -hmm. chip, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. The, in the card in order to make some transactions at distance. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the second step. Mm -hmm. The next step, and that's ongoing now, there are new regulations, for example, in the European com community for that, mm, yep. will be to get the ID documents on your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Mobile ID. Mm. Yes, mobile ID. But it's not a picture of your, of your document that mm. you put in your, in your mm. mobile phone. It's much mm. more than that. Mm. It's really a secure document that you can, if you want, exchange with other governments. Mm -hmm. If you have your, your, your passport in your mobile phone, for mm -hmm. example, and you want to visit a country where you need to get a visa, to mm -hmm. enter the country, mm. then you can 
with your mobile phone. You can mm -hmm. connect on the system mm -hmm. of the government that you, that you want to visit mm -hmm. and exchange data mm. in an easy way, mm. in a convenient way. Mm. And that's a totally new development and mm. that will be the future. And we invest a lot for the people ID division on, the, on that kind of uh, project. I see. So in that sense, in Japan, uh, when it comes to new technologies and digital technologies, uh, people tend to say that, uh, oh, there are many people who, are, who don't have s mobile phones, smartphones. So what, what are you going to do with those people? And that is slowing down the uh, progress or advancement of the new technologies. What about in, in Europe? No, no, it's exactly the same. So it's, it needs to be clear that uh, the, the physical document will never disappear. Oh. Huh? Mm -hmm. Everybody will still have uh, a physical document. Oh. But on top of that document, for reasons of convenience, mm -hmm. huh? yep, because yep, it's yep. easier, okay. you could get on top of your physical document, your document on your mobile phone mm. with okay. different applications. Mm. But okay. at the end, Everybody will keep a uh, physical document. That's that's clear. Oh, I see. Okay. So regarding the second priority, uh, people, uh, corporate culture, uh, I guess it's very important to retain good talents uh, for a long time. So what are the things you are doing, uh, yeah. trying to retain uh, good people? What is the what is the secret sauce uh, <laughs> to, to do that? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a big big problem for the future because. Mm. Uh, we have less and less people available, young people available on the market. <laughs> so uh, it's difficult to attract them. Mm. They need to understand uh, what kind of business you do, mm -hmm. but not only the business, what is the role of the company mm. uh, in the society? Mm. Uh, they look to the purpose of uh, the company. Mm -hmm. So it's purpose. important to show mm. the purpose of uh, the, the company mm. to attract new talents. Mm -hmm. yep. Attracting new talents is good. Mm. But the most important, if you have good talents on board, keep them on board. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And therefore, you need to, to have a culture mm -hmm. where people feel inside the company and mm -hmm. being part of the project of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, Zites is still a small company compared with uh, Panasonic. Uh, and therefore, we, we, we are able to show to our employees mm -hmm. how far they can participate to very key projects for the society. Mm -hmm. When you issue a new mm -hmm. travel document for mm -hmm. a country, mm -hmm. It's really an uh, amazing project mm. and some people, some engineers mm. being part of that mm -hmm. and seeing the scope of the project, they are mm. very motivated to do that. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think uh, younger generation, uh, Gen Z, uh, is more uh, purpose sensitive, I would say, or more engagement kind of driven uh, than I thought. So uh, I think they are, they are uh, only in interested in, in, in money, but <laughs> no, not, it's not the right case. So uh, you have to have a very solid mission, vision, purpose yeah. as a company. I fully okay. agree, I fully agree. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's something uh, that we need to repeat permanently, mm -hmm. uh, that to, to, to communicate, to exchange with our employees permanently, that they feel really involved and part of the, mm -hmm. part of the purpose of the company. So the third one, sustainability, I think your uh, job uh, in the supply chain area, you're focusing on traceability, uh, that will optimize uh, the, uh, your customers' operations and, 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 and also contributing to a uh, uh, reduction of carbon, carbon uh, emission. Exactly. So your job itself is really important for sustainability, yeah, yeah. is that right? When, when you improve the execution of the supply chain, mm. The first point is that you reduce the waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reduce the waste. Yeah. The waste is costing a lot. Right, right, right. right. Because uh, no, if nobody, you are, nobody wins. If our customers are moving food, for example, mm -hmm. fresh food, yeah. you have only a couple of hours or a couple of days mm -hmm. where yeah. they can move the, 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 the food. And if the food is not in, this, in the right place in the right moment... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a perishable. Yeah, it's perishable, it's wasted. Yeah. And that's uh, probably the best improvement that we can give to our customers, oh, okay. reducing the waste. Mm -hmm. And then we have other solutions. For example, we have uh, proof of delivery. What, what does it mean, proof of delivery? Mm. It's uh, a driver of a van or a truck mm. moving in the country mm. and dropping goods in different places mm. Eh? Mm -hmm. and collecting the signature of the customer right. and so on. If you build your system in a correct way, your software in a correct way, you will optimize 
the number of kilometers that the driver needs to do, needs to do. Mm -hmm. and so you will reduce as well the carbon footprint of mm -hmm. this van or this truck a huge uh, social contribution yeah uh, exactly mm. when we speak about um, uh, mobile uh, id solutions mm -hmm. if we want in the future you mm -hmm. and me to sign a document mm -hmm. we can drive uh, and meet together somewhere mm -hmm. but we can also with our mobile phone sign electronically a document mm -hmm. with the data being sto stored somewhere mm -hmm. for you and for me mm -hmm. giving the guarantee that it's uh, a legal document mm -hmm. without moving right. and it's also a way to reduce the, right. the carbon footprint right. really the digital technology yeah. will uh, yeah. save the world okay so thanks so much um finally uh, i want to ask about uh uh your parent company panasonic <laughs> 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 so, uh, I would like to hear your honest opinion about the uh, partnership with uh, uh, Panasonic and uh, uh, if you uh, have any uh, message to uh, Panasonic Connect employees, uh, that would be great. Yes, yes. Uh, first of all, I need to say that it's seven years that, uh, that, uh, that we are part of Panasonic. And um, as I told you sooner, uh, the most important for me is that Panasonic is a long-term view. When Panasonic proposed to ZTS to join the Panasonic Group, there were some intense discussions about what will be the outcome. Mm. Huh? And I need to say that seven years later, mm. we are still on that model that we have defined in the beginning. Mm. So I'm very impressed by that because mm. Panasonic is a large company, mm. but keeping the word looking to the long term it's really uh, a quality of uh, of panasonic mm. now um, on the other s on the other hand panasonic is a really big company mm. and it's sometimes difficult to big find slow probably <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> difficult to find the right yeah. person in to 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 help you and so on yeah, yeah. but therefore i need to say that um, you you decided to join our board of directors of ZTS a couple of months ago, yeah, yeah. and that's extremely important for us. Uh, having you, Nishikawa-san, Tamada-san, in our board of directors mm -hmm. means that uh, we are very close to Panasonic top management, and it helps a lot for us to progress and uh, and to understand what you expect mm -hmm. and to progress in our collaboration with, uh, with Panasonic. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for the great uh, uh, message. Um, Okay, uh, time is uh, running up, uh, so uh, I would like to end uh, this session uh, with this. Uh, thank you so much. Today's guest was the CEO of Zetis, so I would very much uh, appreciate your continued partnership. Thank you very much, Higuchi san It was a okay. pleasure. And by the way, yeah. I was speaking about, uh, ab about uh, Panasonic in the last seven years, mm. but from my very young age, yep. probably five, six years uh, yep. old, yep. I saw Panasonic on a lot of devices at home, devices. so Panasonic <laughs> is a long-term uh, <laughs> brand in my mind. Uh, VCRs and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, transistor radio. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. so that's uh, interesting. Thank you for I your invitation. Oh, no, no, thank you for coming. Okay. ということで、えー、次回のですね案内をさせていただきたいと思います。えー、次回はですねちょっとリスケジュールをさせていただきました、えー、パナソニック方のそしてパナソニックキビの両者の、えー、社長をお招きをいたしまして、えー、面白い話ためになる話それから実情いろいろお聞かせいただきたいと思います楽しみにしていてください、えー、それでは、えー、今期今四半期ですね、えー、あと2週間ですけれども最後の最後まで頑張りましょうそれではあらピエール、ありがとう。Sorry. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.